So now let us say we have decided which Linux distribution we want to install. Okay, so the first thing that you are going to do is download that particular Linux distribution from their official website. It's preferable that you always download it from the official website. Do some search on the net and get the correct website for that. So the first thing that you will need to do is look for the particular version that you want to download. And you'll be downloading something called as the ISO image for that particular Linux. So what exactly is the ISO image is? Uh, like few years back when there were CDs and DVDs quite popular. So the Linux installer as a whole used to come in an installer, CD or DVD. Now, you can create a complete image of this CD DVD as a file. And the same thing is still available in that particular format. Now, this ISO image could be directly written back to the CD DVD, making it a bootable CD DVD, which can be used for starting the installation by booting from that CD or DVD. But since no one uses a CD DVD these days, or generally it will be very rare to find someone using a CD DVD, the ISO image can be written to a pen drive and that pen drive can be used as a bootable thing. So now before we get into how to create the pen drive and all, uh, bootable pen drive, etc., first we need to understand few important aspects about this. So once you have decided which Linux distribution you want to download, you go to that sites page and select the particular distribution, go to the download area and you can start the download file. So your download will start and you will get the download working. Now, let's say we decided to download Ubuntu, fine, or X Ubuntu over here. So we'll be going to the download page and uh, we'll be looking for that particular version. And let's say I click on the download page and over here you will have different options like you can download it via torrent or you can download some minimal version and other things are there. So if you are starting for the first time, go in for the standard desktop version or if you have decided what exactly you want, you can work with that. In our case, since we just started working with Linux, we'll go for this. Or there are mirrors from where you can download from mm -hmm. the web directly. So select any particular mirror and usually you will get the list of all the files that are there. So out of this, I'm going to download one particular uh, distribution. Fine. Over here, you can see the X Ubuntu 24.0 4.1 desktop this is around 3.8 gb and this is what i'm going to download so now for this particular video i have already downloaded this iso image and it is available with me the important criteria that we need to understand is that when we are downloading the files at all uh, sometimes they get corrupted while downloading so since you are going to install and install is a time consuming process. We don't want our files to be broken in between and our install should not work or something like that. So there is a concept of checking whether the file is correct or not by using something called as checking the hash of the file. So generally a hash is provided for that particular file. You can see a hash. This is a SHA-256 sum hash is provided. And this is a huge number over here. And you can run this file through some kind of program which can generate the hash of that file and you can check whether this hash matches. If there is any variation in the hash, what happens is the uh, value completely changes. I'll show you a demonstration over here what exactly is there. On Linux systems, you can do it on the command line or you can use some tool. So let us say if I have a file, uh, let's make a simple file with text editor nano called as a.txt and here i will write apple and we will save this particular file and quit now if i say sha256 sum a.txt i'm going to get some value but if there is even a minor change into the contents of this file okay let's re-edit this particular file and Let's say I'm simply changing small a to capital A and I'm going to save this file again and exit. And when we run the checksum on this, you will immediately see 
that the whole checksum has changed. It is 0, 7, A, 9, and this is a completely uh, different thing. It's a very interesting, uncommon thing happening that the last two digits are same over here. But generally, you will find that the whole checksum remaining numbers are completely different. So if, if there is any variation or corruption in our file, uh, we will come to know about that. So in my case, I have the file downloaded. Let's have a look from the command line interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply change to that particular location where the file is. OK, so you can see this is my downloaded file. And I can just run SHA 256 sum and xubuntu over here. And this is going to take some time. And it will tell me what is the checksum of the file. You can manually verify it. Now, obviously, uh, in your case, you might not be on Linux. So you can download a tool called as GTK hash. Fine. GTK hash this is another graphical tool which you can use. So that is, I'll explain after this. Now you can see that uh, this particular checksum, which is being generated, C33, 8, 6710 and F90 is same as what this particular checksum is. These two checksums match and I can roughly say this is correct. Now, if you are on Windows or any other operating system where you don't have this command line functionality, then you can download this tool called as GTK hash. And over here, what you need to simply do is paste this particular checksum over here uh, in the check field. Fine and select the file. OK, so this is the file which I want to check. And I have pasted the checksum over here. And when we run hash, it's just going to take some time to generate that particular hash, as you can see. OK, so here you can see uh, a tick has been given. It's not green, though. But this tick says that the hash which I have provided matches my 256 SHA hash. and this file is suitable for further work for our installation. So it's a very important step. You should not miss it. Check the hash against the downloaded file and make sure it is correct. It's very, very good, important when you are on a production level and you are going to be using it on a server grade system. So be careful. Make sure the downloaded ISO image is in a perfect condition.